not only to his word, but yes to his will. Not only yes to his word and to his will, but also yes to his way. Amen. So easy to get lost in a world that is spiraling out of control. It's so easy to forget that there is and will always be a creator. So easy to forget that there's someone greater than ourselves. It's so easy to forget that someone died for us. Because we can get caught up. This morning as we share God's word, I've been led to a very familiar passage of the text. We found in the midst of the 23rd division of Psalms. We read the entire Psalm, but we're going to be looking at just one verse. But as we look at this great Psalm, we need to recognize that it's probably one of the only or the few pieces in the Bible that many of us have ever taken the time to actually memorize. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, this Psalm was, this Psalm was written by the great King David. Uh, while he was on the run from the king that he was to replace, King Saul. The king Saul was not a great uh, uh, legal or, or lawful man, but, but David was a man after God's own heart. Because of that, David subscribed to the theory that he was not to touch God's anointed, and so he ran. Even though David had killed 10,000, he still ran from Saul. Even though David had danced before the Lord so hard that his clothes came off his body, he still ran from Saul. Even though David had confronted Saul and had contacted Saul, he still let Saul live so that Saul might be dealt with by the Lord. Some of us can take uh, a lesson from that. See, when we always go out there to do it our own self, but the Bible says, vengeance is mine. Yes. Yes. You don't have to handle it. God will handle it for you. He will fight your battle. But this great psalm was written not when David, not from the perspective of David as king, but from the perspective of David as shepherd boy. You see, sometimes when we think back over our lives, we, we recognize and realize that God has instilled in us from a very early age some of the very things we ministered out of even to this day. Sometimes I remember uh, sitting uh, in the barber shop and, and hearing the older saints talk about a Jesus that sticketh closer than a brother. Yes. And sometimes I sit back and I remember the old preachers telling me that nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Every now and then I remember my mother saying that, that God is a keeper yes. in the time of trouble. See, sometimes we have to look back over our lives and take context for what is even going on today. But David was a man after God's own heart. And today, when we read just the fourth verse, I want to share with you a thought that echoes the sentiments of David. The, the, the fourth verse says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He goes on to say, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And that's what I'm going to celebrate today. This morning I'm going to share with this thought. I will survive. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I will survive. I will survive. Oh, I know y'all from the club, y'all remember Gloria Gaynor. That's right. I know you too. That's right. I know Gloria said that way back to about when a man left him. But see, I will survive because Jesus is in my life. I want to tell you right now, David is saying the very same thing. See, as a shepherd, David was used to success, but as a king, he's on the run. But even though Saul was so powerful, David knew that he would survive. And that's why when David wrote the psalm, he started out talking about the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. See, you can't heed the word of my shepherd. Bible declares that the sheep know the shepherd. They know his voice yes. and they follow him. Yes. And so you can't follow a shepherd that you've never been called to follow. But if you're following the great shepherd, no matter who's preaching, no matter who's singing, no matter who's ushering, who's, who's not doing something, you still want to worship God. Amen. Survival has to be on David's mind. 
I can just imagine standing somewhere and watching a spear go by, knowing that it was intended for you, knowing that the spear that was stuck in the wall behind you had your name on it. I'm sure survival was on his mind, and some of us in this room today, survival is on our minds. For the last five, six weeks since that election day, I've been watching more CNN than I ever have before. The trouble is, when I'm not watching CNN, I'm watching MSNBC. Because every time I tune in, a new saga is happening. And I get so focused up on what is going on in today's world that I sometimes forget who made the world. I get so uh, caught up in, 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 in what Don Lennon has to say or, or what Van Jones has to say that I, I forget what Jesus said. Yeah. Every now and then, every now and then I've got to be reminded that I cannot only look through the lens of CNN, but I also have to look through the lens of my Bible. Yeah. Oh, I know that eight years ago I was celebrating and I was high on the horse. I didn't have a church to pastor, but I had a, a group of people that I had met that were considering me. And I remember the very night that they installed Barack Obama. I remember we had a celebration over at the Savoy. And even though I wasn't pastor of this church, I was invited by some of the members of this church. And I know the Republicans call uh, Michelle Obama uh, Obama's baby mama. Yeah. <laughs> They don't do it with respect, but we had a group of ladies from here called Obama's Mamas. And they really were proud of the fact that they were old enough to be his mom. And they wanted to celebrate. We went out, and, and that was probably the first time anyone called me pastor. I remember, I wanted, the vote hadn't been in yet, but they were starting to call me pastor. And I remember saying, oh, y'all better be quiet. But I sat there, and I, I saw something happen. I saw inaugurated and installed the 44th president of the United States. And I remember crying then. <clears throat> Saying yes, I would have never thought that I would live long enough to see that happen. But I did. And even then we were worried, would he make it? Somebody obviously was going to try to kill him, or, or they were going to try to hurt him, or they were going to try to uh, make things happen that would uh, discourage him or even dismirch his name. But eight years later, yeah. we're celebrating a, a legacy. But now, there's a new king. There's a new king. This new king has a different agenda. And because of his agenda and what we're seeing him do, many of us are scared. Many of us are wondering, what's going to happen to us? Now, if you're not like that, I'm praising the Lord for you. But there's many of us that have a, 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 a tendency to be intimidated by the army. Intimidated. Because it's him and people like him that make lives of common folk difficult. The Republican senators actually tried to take out the office that was put in place to justify or make sure they did what they were supposed to do. Could you imagine us firing the Newfield Police Department? That's exactly what they tried to do. And every day that I watch, I see more and more more and more things happening that makes my heart harden. But then I think about, but what does God say? See, I, the Bible tells me that I'm not to sorrow like those that have no hope. The Bible says that I am more than a conqueror. The Bible says that I am the head and not the tail. And why do I feel so bad? And then I'm reminded that I will survive. I'm reminded that God uh, let David know that even when he's king, he will survive. The Bible lets us know that God not only will let David survive, but that David's throne
strong would go on forever. See, every now and then we have to recognize the God we serve is not a right now God. The God that we serve is an eternal God. He has been from everlasting to everlasting. He has always been, always will be God all by himself. And because of that, is there anybody here that can say with certainty that God has taken you through some stuff? Amen. Oh, I know there's two or three of you out there. That God has delivered just this week. Yes. There's a couple of others that God has even delivered just this day. And I'm sure there's one or two of you that God has delivered even right there. Is there anybody here who's had to depend upon God for their survival? Yes. See, when I look at that fourth step, that fourth verse, the 23rd division of Psalm, I see a person that has depended on God. And because of that, I know that I can depend on God. But the first thing I see when I look at the text, it says, Yea, though I walk through. <clears throat> see, I see that in order to survive the difficult times in our lives, we often have to go through some difficult times. And if I had to think the thought, I'd say we have to proceed through dark places. Look at your neighbor and say, proceed through dark places. But notice that David declares in the text that we are not going to stay there. Oh, I get excited about that. He could have said, Yo, yea, though I stay in the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> no, he said, yea, though I go through. Because, see, the term going through indicates that I'm going to be proceeding. I'm going to be processing. I'm going to be moving on ahead. I remember one of my favorite uh, NFL terms was by a coach by the name of Hank Strayer. And he looked at his assistant coach and he said, how about that boy? He matriculated that ball down the field. All right. See, we got to matriculate on down the field. We can't stay in the same place. And because of that, we need to understand that we need to proceed through some dark places. Now, they even knew some dark places. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, long before Bathsheba, long before he had Uriah killed, David had been through some stuff. He had been out in the uh, valley tending the sheep. That's why he says, yea, though I walk through. Because see, as a shepherd, he knows that if the sheep stayed in the valley, they would die. But some of us need to understand that it's in the valley where we get lessons. It's in the valley where we get strength. It's in the valley where we're bold. It's in the valley where we're shaping. Oh, it's great to be up on the mountaintop. It's great to be high up top of the hill looking out over the world, but I'm here to tell you that mountaintop experiences are only temporary. They are not deigned to last forever. We are to go up to the mountaintop to commune with the Holy God, but we're supposed to go down into the valley to do the work of the ministry. Some of y'all need to understand, you can't stay up on the mountain. All right. Because the work is in the valley. But see, look, David just didn't say in the valley. In the valley would have been great enough. But he said, the shadow of death. See, that's a part of the valley. It's a part of the valley that's right next to the mountain itself. It's the part of the valley that would never get sunlight. That's why nothing could grow in there. It's the part of the valley that the shadows were the deepest. It's the part of the valley where the temperature was the lowest. It's the part of the valley where the dangers were the most high. And see, he said, that's the part of the valley we're going to have to go into. See, even the sheep knew that they didn't want to get too close to the mountain wall. See, there were wolves hanging out in the clefts of the cracks of the mountain that would snatch them up. But see, David says we're going through. You need to understand today that he didn't say we might go through. We could go through, or we possibly could go through. He said we will go through. So even you, you need to know you're going through some stuff. Yes. The Bible declares that in this life there will be some trials and some tribulations. Yes. But I'm so glad that it didn't stop there. All he right. said, but I have already overcome. Oh, yeah. 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 I will survive because Jesus himself has already overcome yeah. in our lives. tell the truth to shame the devil because it's in the valley that I've learned some stuff. I've learned how to survive. I've learned how to make do. I've learned how to get by. I've learned how to pray. I've learned how to praise. I've learned how to celebrate. See, when you're on the mountaintop, you don't praise the Lord like you can't do from the valley. When you're in the valley, you've got a good praise. When you got in the valley, you've got a big shout. Help me. Yes. We will 
survive because our time in the valley is a progressive action. And I'm so glad that it's located in a place that would let me know, keep it moving. Tell your neighbor, 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 keep it moving. The first thing David realized, the fact that he had to proceed through the darkness. Don't settle there. Don't conduct pity parties there. Don't take up residence there. Don't act like you got nothing else but there. Let somebody know it's only a valley experience. And I'm going through. So the second thing it teaches me that in order and that we ought to recognize that the valley, even in the shadow death, there's a presence, a divine presence. Look what the Bible says. It says, uh, yea, though I go through the valley. It says, I will fear All right. no evil. No evil. You know, there's some evil things in the valley. But it says, I will fear no evil. Why? Thou art with me. See, in the valley, the reason we're going to be able to survive is we have a divine presence. See, the Bible says that even if we make our bed in hell, he's there. Even if we go to the furthest parts of the world, he is there. There is no place you can go that Jesus isn't. I know the term out in the present doesn't mean much to you, but it's not just that he's everywhere. So that he's everywhere at the same time. Yeah. See, he can be with you over there. And he can be with me over here. He can be with you over there. He's everywhere. Or the cartoon writer said, Sound my fair is everywhere. <laughs> Jesus is omnipresent. Yeah. And because of that, we have a divine presence in the valley. And I'm telling you, uh, it's a good thing to have a divine presence. David would go on to say that even in the valley, God had delivered him. And I'm so glad that it doesn't take uh, uh, delivering the way the world has to deliver. See, we got iPhones, and, 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 and how many people got an iPhone? And if you don't have an iPhone, I bet you have an Android. <laughs> but everybody has a camera. That's why you can't do nothing, Daphne. <laughs> And somebody got you on Facebook. But see, there was a time that you couldn't do that. There was a time when she snapped. She might even forget she had the, cap, the film in the camera, put the camera in the closet, and the film would never happen. See, sometimes you got to develop the picture. See, sometimes we have to be developed. Our character has to be developed. And it's in the valley that our character is developed because the presence of God is there. Sometimes when we're wallowing in our pity, sometimes he has to come and say, get up on your feet. See, in the valley, they, there's darkness there, and that's where character is developed. Just like any of you remember the old time dark rooms? You used to go in there with your little canister of film. They used to open up the film canister and you put it in the chemicals and, and you bathed it and you, and you massaged it and you processed it and all of a sudden here come a picture. Y'all don't know nothing about that today. So you just click and post. <laughs> click. Now, now I see my son Mike back there. He got live. He just go live. Live. He just wants you to know where he, I, I, I'm walking across the street. Live. Live. But back in the day, you had to develop. And even still, we need to know that our character doesn't happen like Facebook. It takes a while to develop. And so he uses the divine presence in the dark place to develop your character. And sometimes things have to happen in your life so you'll look for Jesus. I always tell folks, if you had two quarters at the end of the month, you would never pray. If all of your bills were paid, were paid you wouldn't even ask God for nothing. If you had more money than month, you would even turn your back on this very church. Why? Because you'd have it all together. But because we are like we are, sometimes he puts us in the valley so that we are praying. That's right. Sometimes he lets us have a valley experience so we'll cry out to him so that he might show us who he is. Uh, I'm telling you, one of the things I love about the valley is that uh, it's a dark place but I don't have to fear because God is there. If I can get two or three of y'all to just sit up, stand on your feet and give God some praise and say, I'm so glad he's here. If I can get two or three of David is showing 
showing us that we have to proceed regardless. But he's also showing us don't despair. There's a divine presence. But the last thing David is showing us, just this one verse, it's going to keep me shouting until Jesus comes back. Tell me, look right there with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Comfort me, my pastor. That's an interesting thing. See, when you're proceeding through the darkness, not only do you have divine presence, but you also are afforded protection from destruction. That's right. Look at your neighbor say protection. Protection. From destruction. from destruction. What a mighty God we serve. Putin can't beat my God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, he hurt me here. Thank you, Lord. But well, he can't beat my God. Thank you, Lord. Trump can't beat my God. Sure, none of them can beat the God that I serve. Even the Supreme Court can't adjudicate him away. He is God all by himself. And I have this protection from all that come to eat of my flesh. And I'm so glad that the God that I serve causes them to stumble and fall. And see, if you're sitting here today, you need to leave this place knowing that you will survive a Trump administration. You will survive whatever comes unto God himself. I could spend a whole lot of time defining the rod and staff, but I said I would like to celebrate so much more by just letting you know that the shepherd's weapon. Yeah. You see, long time ago, before he wrote this psalm, David had a need to use the rod and the staff. Mm -hmm. See, long time ago, his daddy put him out on the family farm, taking care of the family sheep, and that those sheep represented all that the family had. And because of that, David couldn't afford to let none of them sheep be lost. But see, one day there came a bear, and guess what? He beat him up. The rod and the staff, they comforted David to the fact that they delivered the bear into his hands. And David was embraced, and, and he was enhanced, and he was even empowered because not only did the bear come, but sometime later, a lion came. Yeah. And you know how ferocious a lion is, and, yeah. and David being but a little boy, he took the same rod, and he took the same staff, and he delivered the lion into his hands. And because of that, David had history with God. Yeah. Some of you, God has delivered from some stuff. Yeah. Yet the very next yeah. time stuff happens, you lose your ever loving mind. I'm so glad that he's the same God today that he was yesterday. I'm so glad that the same God he is today, he's going to be the same God tomorrow. And if he delivered you yesterday, he delivered you today. Somebody here needs to know that God is just about to break through for you. Somebody here 
name of Jesus that you answer our prayer. In Jesus' name.